Welcome to the Avengers. I am Emma Peel. You wish. Not really. <laughs> that makes me steed. It does. Welcome to the Steam Kitchen. I'm Ian. And I'm Mike. Today we have a great recipe for you. It is a pear custard tart. Ooh, sounds beautiful. Can't wait to taste it. And it's not difficult to make, so let's have a look at the ingredients. Excellent. And while you're doing that, I'll be dusting the ceiling with these feathers. Ooh. For today's recipe, you're going to need the following. 30 grams of caster sugar, one teaspoon of ground cinnamon, 30 millilitres or half a pint of double or whipping cream, two egg yolks, two 400 gram cans of pear halves, and of course, a roll of ready-made short crust pastry. You may be wondering why we're using shop-bought pastry. Because we can. Because we can. No, it's very good value and it's a lot less faff. Yes. Basically, you can buy the shop pot pastry for very little and it's just, it's just the right thickness as well. And it, beautiful results every time. And it cuts down on your prep time. It does. So let's line the dish and we'll get started. Okay, before I put my pastry into the flan tin, I really need to grease it. And I've got a little bit of butter here already. Excellent. What size flan tin is that in? Let me have a look, Mike, have a ruler. Thank you. The flan tin is a nine inch. Okay. So it's a good size. So um, it's got a loose bottom, or I've got a loose bottom, but I'm having treatment. Who am I, So I'm just going to use a little bit of butter. I keep this in the fridge just for this purpose of just greasing around the edge so it doesn't stick. It's a non-stick tin anyway, but hey, better to be safe than Every sorry. Every little helps. It does. Well, that's a good saying. That would work for a supermarket, wouldn't mm. it? There we go. Okay, you don't need a lot. Okay, so now the pastry itself. So this has been taken out of the refrigerator and left to stand for about 10 minutes? It has, so it becomes a little bit workable. More acclimatised. That's the word. Because normally you buy the ready-rolled or the ready-made pastry. You're having trouble with that bag, aren't I'm you? I'm having trouble with this bag. I've got butter on my fingers, literally <laughs> butter fingers. So you normally find the ready-rolled, ready rolled, I haven't got my teeth in now, um, in the fridge, don't you? you the, do. the chilled The aisle. chilled. You can also buy frozen, but we always buy the chilled. And when you do that, it's so it's so much easier to ro to um, handle. unroll and mm. handle. So I'll just open it out. There we go. Lovely. See how thin it is. It's perfect. Yes. Okay. So now I'm just going to tip it into my hand. Bring the tin, am I in the shop, Mike, with you the are. tin? You are, you are perfectly in the shop. Okay, so we'll just pop that in. I'm just gonna... And it's just the right width. It is. It is, if you have a larger tin, it's not the right width. I did something a while ago, and the tin was too big. Do you remember, Mike, I had to join it in the middle. <laughs> it, wasn't, it wasn't brilliant. It worked, but it didn't work as well as I would have liked. Hence, using the shop bought yes okay. it's just it's more convenient and i know there are people out there that say well if you're going to go the entire hog you just go and buy something yeah as in a dessert or, but that's yeah. not really the point is it but what as mary berry one of our great cookery presenters and writers in the uk says she always uses shop bought she says why waste your time yeah and your money when you can get something that's perfect. Mm. I mean, you, you can take the, well, if you're going to do that, why don't you buy anything a bit further on? I mean, you know, if you're gonna make your own pastry, why don't you get your own chickens to get them to lay their own eggs? Why don't you buy a cow and harvest your own milk and cream? Yeah. You know, it's, it, you can take it to whatever extreme you want. You do what's more convenient for you. Of course you do. I would normally pick it up with my hand, but I need to keep it in shots. So yeah. There we go. And I can guarantee the Victorians, if they'd have had ready rolled and ready made pastry. Oh, Mrs. Bink would have used this. They would have used it. She would. So there we are. They were very much into the convenience, weren't they, the Victorians? Oh, very much. Okay, so what we need to do now is just pop it, but just use a fork and pop some little, ho little holes in it. What's that for? This is to stop it rising when we put it in the oven. We're going to blind bake it first. And I'll explain about blind baking when we put the, the uh, blind baking beans in. But we're going to put this in the fridge for about 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. Can you hear Mr. Bentley walking back? Yeah, no, you can see food. <laughs> there we 
Hello you. There we are. We also have pastry left. So while you're while this is chilling in the fridge and you're you've gone to get your cup of tea, mm -hmm. I will then make another Oh, we have a big stretch. <laughs> I will then make another little little um, tin with this and we'll think about what we're gonna put in that. It's just a bit of extra. Okay, so I've rolled out all the waste. So there's no point having waste, you may as well use it up. <laughs> So I'm just, I've got a tiny little tin here. This one's got a loose bottom as well. There's a theme running through here. <laughs> just, there we go. So this one's a four inch one, isn't it? I four think so, yeah. inch one. Four inch, I think, yeah. So the remaining pastry just wants to go into that. What you will discover if you're going to use ready rolled pastry and you re-roll it, that the pastry will actually double in thickness in the oven. I think, I don't know the science behind it, but I think it's to do when you re-roll it out, you break the, break, the blon break the bonds in the gluten. Right, so it's, it becomes more bready. Yes, it does. It. But So it will rise more. It'll, it'll become twice as thick, it'll open in on itself, but it's for nothing, so why waste it? Yeah, bad product. Yeah. So just go down there again. I mean, there's even more left. I mean, you could keep going and make little tarts and gosh knows what else. Well, you really get your money's worth out of it, yeah. don't you? Yeah, I mean, that's another one. Let's prick the base again to stop it rising when we put it in the oven. Excellent. So, so does that go in the, the fridge along with the other one? Go in the fridge along with the other one. For how long? About a quarter of an hour. Okay. So we'll be back when they're both ready to go in the oven. Okay, so now it's time to go to the fridge. Da, 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 da. <laughs> I'm going to put it in the middle of the other one because there isn't a lot of room in the fridge. And we'll be back in about 15 minutes. Okay, so while the pastry is chilling in the fridge, both the little one and the large one will make the filling for the pear and custard tart. Basically, we're going to make the custard. The worst job for me is actually getting the yolks and the um, whites separated. They usually all go over the floor. <laughs> so what we need to do is just to... Have you never thought about buying one of those egg separators? Not until about 15 seconds ago, no. There we are. We'll put that on the uh, the shopping list then for... Um, yeah. For, for Christmas next year. <laughs> yeah. So that's one. <laughs> put that over there. And two. I watched somebody the other day. There was a documentary I was watching about making cakes in Taiwan. Oh, that's fine. Just tossed a little bit, tiny little bit. And they use one egg to break another egg. They bang the eggs together. I know. That sounds like a recipe for disaster. Well, possibly. Okay, so now I'll just. There we go. I'll put those to one side. We might make some meringues. Maybe later in the week. Okay. No point throwing them away. I'll hold that to you. All right, okay. What would be like Christmas? I'll hold you to that. We tried to make some at Christmas. What were they like? Horrible. They were horrible. Okay, so I'll put my two egg yolks in there. Mm hmm There's a little bit of egg white in there, but it doesn't matter. It's yeah. not... Uh, it's not... Uh, An exact important. science. I'm using double cream, but as I said before, you can use double or whipping cream. It doesn't really matter. What do the Americans call it? Heavy cream. Heavy cream, yeah. Our American cousins. Oh, yeah, I should put that in there. The whole lot. The whole lot. It's a 300 mil or half a pint, which is exactly what you need. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's a nice bit, that. Just put the egg yolks in there, then I don't get it everywhere. Okay, so just put the, the machine on. I've got my beater attachment in. The whisk. The whisk attachment. I won't touch while I'm doing this because you can't hear me, so. No, it's a bit noisy. I'll get this going and I'll come back to you when it's all, what do we get, conglomerated. Is that a real word? It's a good word. Thank you. That 
that's a fast mixer, isn't it? It certainly is. Okay, so now we've got that all mixed together. Mm -hmm. You said conglomerated. Yes. I'm going to say amalgamated. Sounds like a company either it does, way, doesn't, doesn't it? it? Let's not lose any of that lovely creamy loveliness. Steam kitchen amalgamated. Yes. And I'm just going to pour it into a, into a jug. So it's pop it into the fridge for 10 minutes just to chill. Okay. And there's no point putting this in the fridge. No. We'd need a bigger fridge. So the cream and egg yolks are going to chill out. And they are lovely and fluffy with loads of air in them. That's lovely. So I'll just pop those in the fridge. And we'll be back when everything has chilled. I've just popped the oven on to preheat it. So what's the temperature please, Benley? Brilliant. Right. While that's sorting itself out, I'm now going to undo the tins off pears, drain them and pat them dry. Decant them. Decant them. Okay, so I have my tins here. These are pear halves. The these are in juice. You can get them in syrup, but the juice ones are always a little bit better for you, I think. Just put my... Well, they're not as fattening if they're not in syrup. No, they're not. And you can also have the juice for your breakfast, don't you? Yes, I will. Thank you. Oh, that's kind of you. <laughs> Just get another bowl. There we go. So we just want to get them dry. One. You have to get more in these tins than I thought, to be honest with you. There we go. There we are. There's a lot of juice in them. Excellent. Okay, put those into that, and we'll save the juice for later. We can have a glass of juice later. Put that over there, out of the way. Okay, we've got our pear halves. Just want to get a little bit of kitchen roll, just to dab them with. You just want to get a little bit more of the liquid off. There's quite a lot in these tins, which is good. It's much easier. I mean, you could use, if you've got fresh pears, you could mm. use them, but you'd need to um, boil them first or cook them first, yes. whatever you do with pears. Blanch them, is that, is that peas? Blanch your vegetables, don't you, not fruit? Yes. No, you can blanch fruit. Can you blanch fruit? Mm. Oh, excellent. There we are. You can blanch apples and then put them in the freezer. Oh, right. So learnt something today. Yes, so they're, the brand that we've got for pears are the Del Monte brand. The 415 grams of tin, you only actually need, um, as far as I remember, 400 gram tins. These are a bit bigger. Right. So you might have a few left, depending on whatever you... They won't go to waste. Oh, they won't go to waste, no. So there is a family connection between myself and Del Monte. There is. Mm. My father, his sister, is married to an Italian who worked for Del Monte in he Italy. He was the man that said yes. <laughs> okay. I think actually he was an accountant, but never mind. Okay, so what we'll do with these, we're just going to cut these in half again. So quarters? Yeah. Yeah, because they are pear halves, aren't they? They are pear halves. In the UK, we don't get pear slices, do we? We get peach slices. Yes. Not a great fan of, of peach and apricot, but pears and apples, yes. Yes. And they... All day. And they Good. work beautifully. It's only to three because it's a large one. There we are. Okay. Beautifully prepared. Thank you. Let's get rid of that horrible cloth. Sorry about the cloth. <laughs> it's, my, it's my handy tea towel that I wipe my hands on. So they're all cut now into halves. What we're going to do now, I'll nip over to the fridge. Mm-hmm. And I will get out the pastry and we will um, put the beans in and I'll explain to you all about blind baking. Okay, but they've been in plenty of time now. There they are. Oh. They're lovely. Okay. Don't be alarmed. There we are. <laughs> Okay, what we're going to do is we're going to blind bake these. Blind baking involves popping a square, I say a square, 
is a round of baking parchment in the bottom. And I've got the little one here as well. So I'll pop that Here's in. Here's one I prepared earlier. Yeah. I use the same ones again and again. Because they don't burn and go, they don't they don't burn. go to waste. And why keep cutting them out when they're a, a nightmare? Mm. Mm. You can fill them with um, rice or dried beans. I'm using these. These are ceramic. Blind, ceramic blind baking beans. The reason we put the paper on there is so the beans don't stick into the pastry and your beans also don't get covered in the grease or the fat from the... Uh, Pastry. Pastry. The reason they're there is to stop it from lifting. Mm. If you put nothing in the bottom and you put it in the oven, it will start to lift. I know we've already pringed it with a pringed it. It's a good work, isn't it? Word, isn't it? <laughs> pringed it with a fork, but these just help to keep it flat. You can never put too many in. The downside is when you come to take them out, they are very, very, very hot. Yes, they've come from a hot place. I know. So are we up to temperature? Not Have quite. Check. Well, that'll be fine. We're going to blind bake these for about 12 minutes. So they become slightly golden brown. And then when 12 minutes is up, we'll take them out and take the beans out. So. That theoretically gives me enough time to decide what I'm going to do with the small one. <laughs> oh, the glamour of it all. The worst bit about baking has to be the washing up. But you got the stuff, you've got to look after it. You're very domesticated, aren't you? Domesticated? Is it like domesticated? Yes, well, you know, I mean, you don't pee in a corner. No, not anymore. Number one. And the baby one too. Well, that went really well. I've still got all my fingers intact. I haven't burnt myself. So let's have a look. So as you can see, they've gone a lovely golden colour. And as I said, the pastry has doubled its thickness because of the gluten bonds broken. So what we'll do, carefully take the beads out. Careful not to burn your fingers. The beads are incredibly, funnily enough, incredibly hot. <laughs> so they go into that. Long left that. This is where they all go usually to you. Just a few left in that. Fingers are clean. And then just tip them up again and out. What you'll find is the sides are all lovely and crispy. And just lift off the baking parchment. One and two. There's still a little bit damp at the bottom, so they're going to go back into the oven for four minutes. Just so they're all lovely and crispy underneath. Okay, so we've got the baking beans left in the dish. I'm not touching these, they are red hot. Do not put them in the container because if you do, the heat will condense and you'll get moisture around the sides and you can get bacteria or mold growing on the beans and that's not what you want. Also, you've got a glass container. Yes, I have. Which is not a good idea to put hot things it in. It isn't, so just leave those to, to cool. For an hour or two, just pop them to one side and forget about them. Oh, that smells lovely. One. And two. Okay, so we have both out now. Got a little bit crispy in the bottom, which is exactly what we want. Let's just move the small one to one side. And then we'll start on the large one. There we go. Are you okay with that, Mike? Yes. Lovely. So we have our pair of halves. Quarters. Quarters, indeed. <laughs> Just going to lay them on. You want so to... you want the fat bottom part, the outside, the outside, and the thinner bit on the inside. Yes, because that way they spiral better. They do. 
can just want it. If you want to slice them smaller, you can do and overlap them, but I really like the chunkiness of these, these pairs. You get loads of pear in each slice then, rather than lots of little bits. My tummy's rumbling already at the thought of this. <laughs> and it's quite healthy because it's got fruit in it. You've got dairy. There you go. You said you were worried that you wouldn't have enough. I was. Okay. Perfect amount. Of so, what I'm going to do with this one. So we have the sugar. Cast your sugar, if you remember. Cast your mind back. Mm. <laughs> Is that a joke? <laughs> and the cinnamon. So we're just going to pop the cinnamon in with so, the sugar. Right, you've just put the cinnamon inside yeah. with the sugar and you mix it together. You mix it together so you end up with the cinnamon sugar. It's a lovely idea. It smells lovely. Okay, what we're going to do now, we're going to sprinkle it very lightly over the pears. We can use it, we're going to use it all but you don't have to go mad with it. It seems to go a very, very, very long way. Oh, yeah. All that lovely goodness there. A bit more. Okay, so the reason I've kept some back, I've decided, move that out of the way, that my little one, mm -hmm. I'm also going to make a pear tart. Oh, you're going to make a mini one out of it as well? I am. It seems a shame to throw away perfectly good pastry when you can have another little tart. Excellent. So I'll just sprinkle that over. Is that just going to be just a smaller version of the larger one or are you going to modify this one slightly? I think I'm going to pop in there because pears and walnuts go so well together. I'm just going to pop in some little bits of walnut. I'm just going to break them off. Pear and walnut, yes, what a lovely combination. I'll put them in there. But you bear in mind, this is a freebie. Well, yeah. You've only, okay, you've only got to pay for the walnuts or, <clears throat> pardon me, the pears, but you've got, you've already got the pears bought and the, the tins are there. Yeah, but I mean, if you wanted to make some individual ones. Oh yeah. You know, they'd be perfect for that, wouldn't they? A bit more on that. And then the rest of it can go in there. And if there was a lot in there, but there isn't. It's exactly what you're supposed to put in. There we are. All gone. So, we need to pop these back in the oven just for five minutes so this cinnamon and sugar mixture starts to caramelise. Then we'll take it back out and add the custard. Oh, Mike. Oh, I just got a whiff. Just got out a lovely mixture. So we're just going to pour it over the top. Look at the air bubbles in that. Yeah, lovely and light. Lovely. I'm just going to go carefully around. Put in the custard. Because all that lovely cinnamon and sugar. Let's put some in here. It's going to float to the surface as well, isn't it? It is. But also, it's going to rise because egg custard rises. So you've got all that custard loveliness. Put a bit more in there, not a lot because we're quite high up. There we are. Oh, if only you could smell this. My tummy rolling already. Okay, so now back into the oven for, I think as far as I remember, it is 20 to 30 minutes, or until the custard is lovely golden brown and set. Nice. Don't forget the freebie. Time is up and it smells delicious. Let's turn the oven off. Save some electricity. Oh, my goodness. Two. There we go. 
crust is nice and crispy. It's a springy custard and it wobbles just right. Oh yeah. <laughs> bit like me. A bit like Mike. Wobbles in the right places. So what we're going to do now, we're going to leave that now. I'm leaving it in the tin because it's pulled away from the edges as you see so we mm -hmm. know it's all going to come away. So how long are you going to leave it for? An hour. Because the custard will still be very runny so we need to leave it for about an hour then we should come back and have a taste. So that will give it enough time to set? It will. Well it's all cool and I've put it on my cake What's the word I'm looking for? Stand? Stand, that's the word. <laughs> and I've cut a slice and just look at that. Mm -hmm. Doesn't that look beautiful? Absolutely. You've got the layers of custard, you've got the fruit, you've got the crispy crust. The caramelised sugar caramelized on the Caramelised sugar with um, cinnamon. Mm. <laughs> okay, so there's only one thing left now, isn't there? There is. A taste test. Taste test time. Oh. Would you like squirty cream? I would like a little bit of cream. We're classy birds, me and him. We like squirty cream. Oh, it's all right. <laughs> there we go. Okay, so I shall just take a little piece from that. Is well, while you're super soft. While you're tasting that, mm -hmm. don't forget, everybody, um, if you could uh, purchase the downloads from the website, it would help us along to support the channel. I've got the one here, which is the Yorkshire Ruffians and also the Toffee Apple Upside Down Cake. There'll be this one in the link below as well. What do you think? Oh, absolutely beautiful. Go on, you have a try. Oh, before we finish, hang on. Mm, well. Oh, that was the small one. The freebie. Mm. That is beautiful as well. That's got walnuts in it. I might give that to mum and dad. Yeah, that's nice. Nice idea. Right, you do the finish off bit and I'll taste this. Thank you. Watch my waistline expanding as, the, as we speak. So I hope you've enjoyed watching Ian create that beautiful pear tart. If you have, please want to give the video a thumbs up, share the video with your friends, and if you haven't subscribed to our YouTube channel already, you can do so by clicking the button at the end of the Happy video. Happy baking, everyone. For more recipes like this one. Yeah, we'll see you in another two weeks. Yes. Bye for Bye now. For now.